Hello, my friends. How are you? This is Kate Lanigan McGregor, and I have a question for you. Are you ready to rise? Rise! Are you ready to have the most amazing real estate profession possible? So your Realtor Association, the Realtor Association of Pioneer Valley, you know what? They care about you, they know you're awesome, and they want to give you the best roots possible in order to become the best professional that you can be. So welcome. And my name is Kate Lanigan McGregor, and I am the owner trainer at Agent Rising. Okay. And again, our sole purpose at Agent Rising is to help elevate you, right? To help you rise in your profession. So what does RISE stand for? Because you know what? It's a brand new program. It stands for Rituals, Intentions, Systems, and Education. Okay. And this is a new agent training, although quite frankly, uh, it's for any agent that wants to either get back to some basic skills or actually look at things a little bit differently than the way that you learn them. All right. One of the things that's been uh, really important to me as a real estate professional is to figure out what it is that makes you do what you want to do and do those things successfully and then continue doing them. Because one of the things I've learned is that getting going isn't really the problem. The problem is staying with it. So anyways, so for testing, researching for years now, and slowly but surely, we've come up with this program called RISE, okay? And today what we're going to talk about is the rituals part of it, okay? Are you ready? Let's dig in. When I got into sales, the things that we learned was what the success formula is. How many appointments do I have to book in order to you know, get to the closing or get to talking to the people. And there was a formula, so it was like a funnel, okay? So it was all about numbers. And the other thing they had us do was they had us learn scripts. So what do you say if they want to think it over? What, are, what, do you, what do you say if they ask you about the price, okay? And so we learned scripts and we learned uh, our sales funnel, okay? And those things are really important and those don't go away. There's another piece to it though, and it has to do with who you are and how you're motivated and what your drivers are and what your idea and your vision of success is. So as I realized, as I saw agents get on fire and for a year or two, like have an amazing year, have an amazing second year, and then start to fizzle out. And I started to think, what's happening? Why are they fizzling out? Like, you know, and what it is, is that the skills got them going. Okay, but the mindset, wasn't there. Okay, the rituals to continue going weren't there. Okay, they were doing it because their manager was checking on them. They weren't, they weren't doing it because their heart and their own drivers and their own vision of their own success wasn't solidly in place. Okay, so what RISE is, is a training program that's designed to launch, inspire, empower, educate, and create a thriving realtor profession. Okay, so we are going to cover all the different bases that I feel are really important in order for you to not only get your real estate program and your, own, your profession going, but to keep it going, okay? And what's different about us is that, again, while you are learning the technical and introductory tools to thrive, okay, you'll also be learning about the winning mindset to sustain and drive your hunger, okay? One of the things I saw was that people, that complacency came in, okay? Or they started getting a bad attitude because quite frankly, you know, real estate is hard. We have a lot of difficult challenges that happen to us. So what's different about RISE is we try to get to that internal motivator, motivator, really kind of identify what it is that you want to create for your own business, for you, okay? And expand on that. So I think it's really exciting and I'm really excited that you're here with us. So I would like to kind of cover the overview about what we're going to do. And for those of you who have already enrolled, yay you, you're going to get a great jump start on this, is that there's going to be in all eight modules, okay? Four of them are going to be online and four of them are going to be live when we have our workshop day, okay? And so it's going to go independent for R, which is rituals, classroom for R, which is rituals, independent for I, which is intention, classroom I, which is intention, independent systems, 
and classroom systems, and independent education and classroom education. So the nice thing about the independent learning is you can do it wherever you are, whenever you are, and you can go back to it at any point in time. So when we are covering something, you'll go through it the first time, then you'll start to say, wait a minute, I know that we talked about that, I'm gonna go back to it. So it's yours forever to learn. Okay, and then our workshop day when we get together is we're going to be doing a whole bunch of hands-on learning, expanding on it, question and answer, uh, getting together and doing interactive type things because I think you need both in order to cover it. So I don't want to dig in too deeply, but I just want to do the little outline with you on how it's going to go. Okay, so, so the e-course today is we're going to do the rituals 365 and that's going to cover some organization and some goal setting. When we meet for our day, we will actually dig ourselves into the whole entire system of Rituals 365, okay? That is a program that was developed by us, and I think it's something that's super cool. All right, I stands for intention. So the online component of it will be the business of you, gratitude marketing, and authentic branding. So how do we actually create your business structured around you, okay? Now when we get together, we're gonna to be doing, with intention, we're gonna be talking about some of the hardest stuff, conflict management what to do when, when you're a rookie and they're asking you something, the double check, um, obje objection handling, and how to role play. You know, and if you're uncomfortable with role playing and it's face, some tools that I think you can do on your own to get you the same kind of results, okay? The next is systems. So when we, uh, so then we will actually be meeting. So we're meeting in the middle. So we'll be talking about uh, the, the checklist templates. We'll go, be going over the systems and you'll have some systems of your very own that you can create and that you can have for yourself. Okay. And you can take them with you wherever your business goes. Okay. And then the, and again, while we're live, we'll also be doing the education, which is going over forms, talking about agency, uh, finessing MLS, MLS PIN, and then uh, phone and communication skills. So we'll be working on those live. After our live day, you will then have the independent, uh, you'll have the independent hours, the e-courses for systems, which will be the seven strategies of sales success. Again, we'll be reviewing those database templates and we will be digging in. Again, I was talking to you about that funnel earlier. We will really be digging into what your strategies of success are. And I think there's gonna be a few that will surprise you. And then the last is education, okay? Getting back to basics and the real foundations in your learning, agency, forms, MLS, and social media, the social media do's and don'ts, and how to structure your social media to actually build your brand and your vision of success, okay? So that's an overview of what we're going to be doing. And I'm looking forward to it, and I think that you will find that it's something like you've never seen before. So now we are going to begin the module one online e-course and a couple of tips before we get going is the settings on this are set that you can auto forward auto rewind pause and when you come back it will auto start where you were okay so i was deciding whether to put this as one big video or a few different videos and i thought i would keep it as one big video and let you be able to navigate forward and backward okay there's also an attachment on here which is the travel planner that we're going to be talking about. Okay, so you can take a minute and download that. Now, when you sign up, I when, and when I get your name, I will send you a travel planner, okay? The first few are on their way to you right now, okay? All right, so what are we gonna be doing? And this is just kind of an overview of how we're going to be breaking down this, this, this online module for you, okay? So rituals. We're going to talk about what exactly a ritual is, okay? And then talk about what Rituals 365 is. We're gonna be talking about some organization uh, tools for you, as well as some habits that I think you might wanna do, and also some skills for you, and also some whys. Why do we do it? Some goal setting. And it will be doing this in a various uh, types of ways, because I think that goal setting is something that's really specific for each person. Calendar mastery, again, such a big topic. We as real estate professionals have got to master our time and our calendar in order to get in everything that we need to do to be the best that we can be. And then it's some, some time, money, wellness uh, tracking, okay? So it's uh, you know one of the things that we know is that we don't know where we're going if we don't know where we are, okay? So these are the, the big topics that we will be covering uh, as we move forward through this module, okay? All right, so again, it's called Rituals 365 to Rise. 
and it's business organization and time maximization. All right, so I want to just talk with you a little bit about why it is that I am starting with Rituals 365, how we got here. And I think what's even more important to start with is to tell you how I got here, okay? And a little bit about my history, okay? So I have been in real estate for about 20 years and I opened my own real estate company about 15 years ago, okay? And when I did, I, I, you know, I started off as it was a, a, I was a mom with three young children and I really honestly just kind of thought about it as doing like a little extra on the side. And through the years, there have been times that through financial challenges that I've had as a family, or we've had as a family, I've really had to turn that faucet on, okay? So my original vision of success was honestly to have enough Pampers money, okay? And I'll tell you the story about how this happened. My, I was in Walmart. I had children that were young, and I, you know, I was in. I, I started in my 30s, so I was a little bit older. And I, I'm with my husband. We're at the store, and I'm like, "Well, Connor, my son, my my little baby son, likes Pampers Premium." And my husband said, "Oh, regular diapers are fine. You know, let's just get the the cheapos." And I'm like, "No, he gets trapped. Blah blah blah. We want you know Pampers Premium." And then my husband said, "You know, no, the you know regular." Pampers are fine. Regular diapers are fine. And at that time, even though it was just a small, insignificant moment at Walmart, I was like, I never financially want to be under somebody's thumb ever again in my life. You know, as I say, I got married when I was in my 30s. I had my babies when I was in my 30s, and I was an independent woman, and I just could not fathom that that was going to be my future, right? And again, as I said, over the course of time, and maybe we'll weave the stories in as we go along, I you know, we, we needed my business to, to, to live. And the business grew and grew. Every year we doubled our business at Bold Moves. You know, so, you know, up until we hit 10 years, I guess, right? So here's the thing is that, you know, for me to be able to want to have a full life with my family, a full life with my real estate uh, company, and then as we moved on and we, we got the real estate school going, a full life with a real estate school, I realized that for me, because I'm a scatterbrain, you know, I'm all over the place and I have amazing ideas all the time. I needed something to centralize me. So that's how the seed got planted. And as we go along, I'll tell you a little bit more about my story, just hopefully because you can relate. Okay. Anyway, so let's dig in and let's get going. Why don't you pull up that Rituals 365 travel planner now? I have to be honest. I am disorganized. Okay, so that means that I don't even, I'm not even unorganized, I'm disorganized. And a couple, a couple years ago, I realized that I needed to be able to maximize my time in order to achieve what I wanted to achieve. As I said, I had the real estate company. That took up a lot of time and energy. And as such, when I wanted to grow Agent Rising, right, and when I wanted to be more with you, when I wanted to be out there training and developing this program and the online school, and all of those kinds of things, I'm like, I have got to organize better, okay? And so that kind of started one piece of how we, we came to Rituals 365. And the other is, I right when video came out, I realized that video was going to be important, and I started doing live streams daily. And this was probably about three or four years ago. And it started off actually as a fitness thing, and it kind of evolved into a little bit of a business, real estate and marketing kind of fusion, and then, as last year started, and again, I was president of my board. I had, I, my online school was in its second year to third year, and it was busy. And I, was, I had a full schedule of going around and instructing. And I also needed to sell real estate, right? And love to sell real estate. So I had all of these things, and I said, I need to have some rituals in place. And again, I did not make up the word rituals. I did not de create this idea that we need rituals versus goals, okay? I, Tim Ferriss is one person who says you know a lot about rituals and he says rituals are those things that we do no matter what okay so i had to take them from tasks activities or goals and i had to make them no-brainer activities okay and that's to me what the definition of a ritual is so that no matter what happens in the course of the day i'm going to do these things and that's how i had to take away that brain work and that brain um 
like the monkey brain, if you will, of, of doing different things every day and trying to, trying to get all, you know, all, all, you know, like, yeah, I'm crazy. I'm busy. La la la. And I didn't get to the things that were really important. Again, this drive that I'm talking about, this internal drive that I have. And I think that if you're involved in real estate, you have this internal drive also. We need to harness it in a positive way. Okay. So that's the why behind the travel planner. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through this with you step by step, what each of the things mean and how they matter. Okay. And I think that you'll find that it's, it's, it's quite interesting. So I wish I could show you my office and the number of papers that are everywhere. And in my goal to organize in a fashion that I could have everything that I needed where I was when I was there was so important to me because there were papers everywhere. I was always looking for papers. I hated myself because I couldn't put my hands on the papers. So my husband gave me this rocket book, which was a reusable paper where you write in this notebook, you, when you're done, you, you, you cloud it, you put it to, um, you, a drive, right? And they had a file, you know, I ended up using my Google drive because that's what was easier for me. Right. And then you just, you put a cup of water on it, you put it in the microwave and all the words go away and you use it over and over again. So with that idea, I was like, what if we could come up with something that had act, like, you know, my day schedule on it, you know, and all the stuff that I want to get done so that instead of it just being blank paper, I actually had direction for the day. Okay. And I had been in my rituals, three, six, five on the live stream. So it's, it's on Facebook. The real, the, the group is called rituals, three, six, five, right? We, we live stream every morning at six 30. We had been talking about rituals. Okay. So I'm like, how can I incorporate that idea of that reusable paper? Okay. Or that reusable something. So it's always in one place with my rituals. Okay. And the things that were kind of being created and formulated through our alpha testing and our beta testing. And I guess before I go forward, I just want to show you like, so this is my alpha test, part of my travel planner for the alpha test. See lines all in different places. I created this one, you know, then I, uh, you know, I sent it out. The people who were in the group took them. They, they gave me their feedback. What needs to be bigger? What needs to be smaller? What we need more of, what we need less of. And we came up with a beta test which is what you're involved in now, okay, which is laminated, hard laminated on a, on a, on a piece of paper that's, that you can take anywhere with you. It fits in everything, right? It fits in your pocketbook. It fits inside a book. It fits inside your journal. It fits inside your planner. It goes anywhere with you, okay? Now, honestly, for my calendar, I use my phone, right? I feel like I need to know exactly where I need to be. But this one thing this does not do is it does not strategize for us. It does not give us an overarching goal of where we're going and it doesn't give us a full concept of the day. Okay. I can't get that onto my phone. I know a lot of people use some different apps for me. I'm visual. I need to see it anyway. So this is our beta test. This is what you're getting in the mail. This is what you just downloaded for um, a copy to, to, to follow along with me. Okay. So that's how this came now. The interesting thing is that when I was doing it, my first thing I was using dry erase and one of the Tracy Lee in my office said, you need to find wet erase markers. And what wet erase markers are is they, you can write with them. They don't come off until you wet them. Okay. So now I have a, a semi permanent thing that can go anywhere. And as long as it doesn't get wet, it's, it's written down. Okay. And now at the end of the day, I still follow that same rocket book thing where I snap a show a photo of all the pages and I put them into the cloud. Okay. So the cloud, for those of you who have, who have not started using your, your computer or your, or your systems, it's a file online that you can access from any device that you have so that no matter where you go, you can access that. And then when you have time to actually do some strategy or do some looking back to look forward or to get your feet on the ground, you have it right there. Okay. So the concepts here are erasable paper, the ability to constantly update it at all times and you can access it from anywhere at any time. So those were the three things, the three goals I had in putting together the travel planner in Rituals 365. Okay. That's my why to why this looks like this. And this is carry this. Now people have given me feedback and you're going to give me feedback, right? About how it works for you. I've heard things like I can't get my whole day in there. So yeah, so maybe we highlight it, right? So when we do the weekly thing, like it's not like your whole entire, you know, you know, meeting with this person at this place, it's more of like the person's name or whatever, just so that you can look 
and you can structure and maximize and create your schedule exactly how you have to do it to, to achieve what you need to achieve so that you can hit your vision of success and get rid of that craziness in your brain. That was the other part for me. It wasn't even so much that I was getting highly functional and active. It was also that my brain was at rest when it was there, right? Because I knew I could access it at any time and I thought that that was really important. Okay, so let's dig into exactly what each piece is, okay? Okay, so here is our daily rituals. Now this is an eight and a half by 11, so there's bigger ones that you can take with you. I actually took mine and bound them. Again, it's this ain't pretty girls and boys because it's still in the works on what's gonna work. But this is what I travel with me in my briefcase, okay? So I, I kind of let them communicate together. So for many people, this ends up being a little bit better if it's bigger. That being said, it doesn't really matter. What we're gonna talk about now is what goes on that daily, your daily heart sheet, if you will, okay? Your daily rituals. And again, what did I say rituals were? Those things that you do, no brainer activities, that you're gonna do and you're gonna complete them and you're gonna make sure that you are on the beam, okay? And as we do this, you will understand why there's so many different parts to it, okay? The first, affirmations. How am I feeling this morning? All right, so on there, the first question it asks you is like, how are you today? All right, now there are people who do affirmations like 10 affirmations they say every day. I went to a, a success seminar with T. Harvecker and he had 10 affirmations that he gave us on a, on a business card size laminate. And every morning I was supposed to look at myself in the mirror, I was supposed to bring my shoulders back, and I was supposed to say my, my 10 affirmations. Things like, I am a money magnet, right? And I remember what they all were, and it was something that was a way to start the day and a way to program your brain for success. Now, for us, I think that we have ups and downs and ebbs and flows in real estate. So I want you to be honest about your day. Okay, because if you're honest about how you're doing that morning, then you know what? You can adjust accordingly, right? So you're having a quiet day, you're a little tired, you did open houses all weekend and Monday's a catch-up day, Monday's a catch-up day, right? So your affirmation, how am I feeling this morning? Okay, and then you can, like, you start where you are, okay? You don't start where you want to be, you start where you are. So what is your affirmation for today? Super important, don't skip it. So here are some words that are on a word cloud that just kind of cover some of the things that you may be feeling. All right, I, I find for me, a lot of times I focus on things like focus, breathing, right? If I'm so hectic that I'm not taking time to actually breathe, okay? Uh, if I am happy, if I am satisfied, if I'm excited, if there's different things going on, you know, it's really important that you check out where you are in that day. All right, the next part there on the, like the left-hand side, it says my schedule, my hourly tasks today. Okay, so a lot of times I will transcribe from my phone onto my hourly tasks. And by the way, I'm gonna give you a little hint. I do this the night before just to get ready for the day and I just fill in my affirmation. But that's like superstar, you know, mentality. Like I'm gonna be super organized. You know, I'm gonna be happy if you do this in the morning. You transcribe what your schedule is. Now take a look at that schedule. Does that look like something that's gonna work for you? Okay, so you know one of the things I think that Tom Ferry said, who's a, who's a sales coach, is the word of the year. So our word of the year this year is schedule. Okay, appointments. That if you have your appointments scheduled, you will be successful. If your appointments are blank, if you go and you look at your schedule and it's blank for the day, then you know that that's, you are not gonna be rain making that day. You're gonna be throwing out the boomerangs, right? In that cycle, that circle of getting out, getting it out so that it comes back in, right? But you know that, okay? So you are d deliberately making that decision, okay? So what are your hourly tasks, okay? And look at them, does it make sense? Do you have enough time to travel to them? Okay, are you gonna be late? Are you gonna be scrambling? Are you gonna be prepared? You know, one of the things that, you know, we talk about when people book their appointments and they, they know that they're gonna be coming in like on two wheels. Guess what? You look like a one on paper hanger, you know? And they always say there's, and this is gonna be part of one of our other ones, like your seven first impressions. One of them is your car and your briefcase, right? How do you look, you know? And how are you mentally focused? So does your schedule make sense? Are you setting yourself up for success? I will tell you for me, one of the things that is important for me is I don't really book more than four 
four things in my schedule in the course of a day if I can help it, ideally. Because for me to be on the way I want to be on, I need to have the time to prep. I want to make sure everything's in order. I want to make sure that I am uh, sparkly, <laughs> you know, so I don't overdo it on that schedule. I, um, you know, that's a personal thing. Some people function at a higher level than I do and they can do more. Uh, for me, I like to see four things in my schedule every day. That's my success formula, okay? So it will be personable, personal for you. I want you to start watching it. So just because I say I like four appointments a day doesn't mean that there's only four things on my task list, okay? One of the things I have realized in our lives is that we have a lot of tasks that have to get done. And if we are not prepared for them, then they can derail us, okay? So on your, on your form, you see it says errands, prospects, and follow-up. Okay, so errands. Are you, like I was when I started out in real estate, a mom? or a person who's doing this as a second job, or somebody who's got some, you know, a mother or a father that are aging that need your help. Like what are your daily errands and, and, and no non-negotiable items that have to be plugged into your schedule? Okay, because again, one of the things I, I severely underestimated was the amount of time it takes me to travel from place to place. Okay, so what are your errands that you have to do? What are your home responsibilities? Okay, we wanna make sure that we are accounting for them in the course of our day. Our prospects, okay? One of the things I know now is that, you know, you hear, I think Brian Buffini calls them ripe apples and not ripe apples, is like, we have to make sure we're keeping an eye all the time on those not ripe apples, those people who aren't ready for us now, but they're in the prospect. We don't wanna just say, if they tell us, like, I'm not gonna be ready until the spring, we don't stop talking to them until the spring. We keep ourselves in contact with them. So we wanna make sure on our daily basis, we are checking in. If not physically, then mentally, okay? And the last is follow-up. Uh, I believe uh, that our relationships with people start after we're done with them, right? After the showing, after the open house, after the closing. And so I wanna make sure that I am following up with these people and establishing an enduring relationship with them. Okay, when I get busy, and if, I'm not, if I don't have them on my list and I don't have them on a spot somewhere, then guess what? I don't think about them, right? I have a woman, I'm gonna tell on myself here, she's an old family friend. She's my, actually her daughter's my friend and, and she has this little piece of land that she's asked me for CMA forever. Now I know she doesn't wanna sell it. Her kids wanted to get the CMA. We've sat down and talked about it several times, but I haven't given her the hard paperwork on that because you know what? <laughs> Like she doesn't bug me for it. It's not, it's not going to be something she's selling. So it just doesn't get into my, into my act, action, right? And that's a mistake. I should find a place to put that in. I'm telling on myself because I want you to know, like it's hard to be perfect on this stuff, okay? Now, I don't know who invented this jar technique, okay? Or this jar, this jar strategy. I've seen it on many, many different uh, training programs, okay? And when you're looking at those two jars, those two jars have the identical amount of everything in them, from stones to pebbles to sand, okay? Now, you'll also hear these being called boulders and whatever, okay? Now, the jar on the right, okay, so the one that has everything that makes it in there, they started with their, with their rocks, okay, or their boulders. And those are the non-negotiable tasks that you absolutely have to do that day, okay? Things that are embedded in your schedule that have to be done, okay? Those go into your, your, your strategy for the day first. Okay, now those pebbles. Those pebbles are things that you wanna get done that are on your schedule that you can break down into say 15 minute chunks or so, okay? And I'll give you an example. You know, I, I love doing gratitude marketing and writing notes. So when I was doing a lot of driving for my kids and I had to wait for them to get out of school or wait for them to get a, you know, done with their sport or whatever, I was what I call a baggy lady. I always had a bag of thank you notes with me. You know, I still do. It's just at that time, I, it was really important that I plug them into those 15 minute times that I had available rather than saying jump on Facebook to just see what's going on, okay? I maximize those 15 minute times, okay? Those were my pebbles, okay? And that could have been thank you notes, uh, returning emails, updating my tracker, right? Getting, you know, catching up, seeing what I, what I wanted to put on there, um, returning phone calls, uh, booking appointments that I had to make for my family, whatever it was, I made sure that those things that went on my tasks had a spot that I could actually make sure that I was doing them, 
Okay, now the, 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 the mason jar on the left, that's when, and then the sand is all those little things you gotta do, right? All the other stuff, right? The, the little minutia that falls into the day. And the thing that's really important is that they got, those things are gonna get done, right? It's your important things that you wanna make sure you take time for and make time for, okay? So same jars, same stuff in them, with our st strategic planning on our day, we can fit it all in, okay? And that's what the beautiful thing about this planner is, is it gave me a way every day to do that jar technique to the best of my ability, other than Mrs. We Met. <laughs> all right. Okay, so now that I have evaluated what my, my schedule is as far as appointments go, and I've looked at what I have to do for my family, my errands, my prospects I gotta check in on, that kind of stuff, now I can plan my day. Okay, now I can say, this gets done, this gets done, this gets done, okay? And now I realize that as I'm looking at this, and this is what happens as you get busier, is I realize, you know what? I can't get all of that stuff in, right? I have way too many things in these two, these two things going down my left column that are gonna make me not be able to get to everything I need to do. So what do you do then? So first of all, you need to prioritize, right? And so the way to prioritize on this is to realize, and again, there's four different categories. This one is by Eisenhower. Again, I've seen this written up in different ways as well, right? What are my urgent, important things to do? What has to get done today, that's important, okay? That are, those are the things that have to go into your plan for the day, all right? Because those are the things that you, that have to get done, okay? Now, here's where the nuance comes in. What are the important but not urgent things, okay? What are those uh, CMAs that you're creating for the appointment in two days? What is the research that you have to do in order to get prepared for that? What is the classes that you have to take? What, like, what are the things that are important but aren't urgent? Okay, because these need to get done too. And I just want you to hold on to those for a second because their <laughs> enemy is urgent, not important things. Okay, what are the things that show up that end up being that they're urgent, they're right there in front of you? okay, but they're not important, okay? If we're not careful, those urgent, not important things take us away from the important but not urgent, right? So you go into the office and, I, and, and you get there and you see that there is something going on and so you jump in and you help out and you see that the printer's not working and so you, you know where the toner is and you jump in there and then you go back and you see that there's, you know, that, that somebody's got a problem and you have to jump in on that. And so all these things that are urgent but guess what? They are not important to you achieving your goals, right? So you want to make sure that you are not re reacting to what's around you, all right? You are proactive, not reactive. I'm telling you, those urgent, not important things get us all the time. My daughter forgot her homework at school. I mean, at home. I have to jump up and go get her homework, right? Those kinds of things, because these are the things that you're going to want to delegate to people, right? You're going to let somebody else run with it, right? The ink on the printer. I don't have to do that myself, okay? The transmitting of information from one thing to another. I can have someone do that for me, okay? The bringing homework to my daughter. I can have someone ride that over, right? So you want to make sure that you are doing the things that you have chosen to do, okay? And then the last one is not urgent and not important. All right, those things go on your don't do list. Okay, if it's not urgent and it's not important, you know, either, and, but you know, if you either just don't do it, get it off your list, say I'm not doing it, or if it's something you want to do later. Again, I talked to you before about ideas, right? So I have a lot of ideas and I, and I have to find a place to put them <laughs> so that I don't forget them, right? But I know that I can't do them today. Those go in a parking lot. We're going to talk about that later. Okay, not urgent, not important. Absolutely not. Do not do them. Right, not urgent, not important. Does that sound something like Facebook all day long? Okay, or scrolling through your emails or going online and just checking out the internet. You know, my husband comes home sometimes and he'll be like, oh yeah, I saw that on MSN. I'm like, what the hell are you doing on MSN in the middle of the day? Right, like it's not MSN time in the middle of the day. This is our magic time. We don't wanna be spending it or wasting it on something else. Okay, do you feel? All right, so that's our, agent, that's our urgent importance. So before we move on from here, okay, that was kind of talking about the actual plugging into your schedule type things, organizing the day, right? So those are very task-oriented items that I just gave you. How do you feel about that? Do you feel a level of overwhelm? Like, you know what, I, I don't know how I'm going to do it all. Or are you like, I got nothing, right? It's generally when you're starting one or the other. 
And, you know, because you are just starting out a lot of times, you don't have a ton of appointments, okay? And so you have this beautiful opportunity to start by, by virtue of having time, creating habits, rituals, and behaviors that are going to get you some amazing results because you have the quality, right? So your time is quality, right? Not so much quantity, right? Because I have this belief that, you know, time is our most precious commodity as far as business goes. And what I mean by that is that if someone says that money is your most important driver, right? And I'm going to make more money and I'm going to do whatever so that more money is there. I'm like, all right, I know that I can borrow money if I don't have any money. I can use the money I have or I can use the money in my bank if I've already made it. So money is fluid, right? I don't actually need money. Like I can get money, I can borrow money, I can, I can get into the money. But with time, I can't bank time, okay? And I can't, I, so I can't, like if I have an extra hour today, I can't throw that into tomorrow when I'm going to need it, right? And the other thing is I can't get back time, okay? Money, time that's gone by has gone by. All I have is time, okay? So how I structure my time and the thing that I'm most careful of and for is my time. Okay, and I tell you this because we're going to talk later about, you know, who is it that you want to work with? Okay, what is it that you want to do to develop your business? And I'm going to tell you to be picky, right, and really create the life that you want. And you're going to tell me, yeah, that sounds all well and good, but I need to make some money because I went out on a limb doing this real estate stuff. And if I don't make money, I don't get to keep doing it, right? So I'm going to take any business that comes my way. All right. And again, I'm just going to plant the seed that, you know, uh, Seth Godin talks about the smallest viable audience in order to be successful. And I love that idea. You know, this is what's different about my program and other programs is I don't want you to go try to get in front of a million different people. I want you to be deliberate in who you're deciding you want to be with. Okay. So why am I talking about this now? is because as we decide who it is that we want to be in front of, one of the most delightful ways to be in front of people is by either calling them or sending them notes, okay? Now, you'll hear them called thank you notes and people will say, well, I don't have anyone to be thankful to or whatever, I don't know who to thank. So I'm just gonna call them notes, okay? Gratitude marketing notes, all right? When I, um, when I started doing daily notes, okay, and that was, you know, one of the things that became really important part of my business, a lot of things changed for me, you know, because I found people I wanted to be in front of. I found people I wanted to serve. And the fact of giving a note to somebody that they haven't, that they haven't, um, that they haven't anticipated, that that personal note is still so amazing. Definitely the best return on your dollar, okay? Uh, so we, we, who we gonna, you know, you want to have a daily habit of doing that. Now, um, the other part of that, by the way, those pictures of those cards, those are, those are my own gratitude marketing cards that I had created for me. And uh, I actually sell them, but nobody buys them, quite honestly. But I love them because they're inspirational, they're pretty, and they're, you know, and they're something different, right? They show that I go the extra mile, right? Now, that's the gratitude marketing cards. And we're going to talk more about that. And the other thing is what I call the, the 500, the 5,000 pound phone, right? We're just so reluctant to pick up that phone and call somebody. You know, one of the problems with technology is that we feel like technology has replaced that personal touch. Technology was never meant to replace these things. It was meant to help us and maximize things. Okay. So back to the phone. So we get out of the habit of calling people that do not call registry. Perfect example not to call somebody, right? What if they were on the, per the, the, the do not call registry, right? I heard that in my office, like people in my office, I swear, rejoiced when the do not call registry came because now I was not going to be going like, why aren't you on the phone, <laughs> right? And I'm not on the phone like calling, cold calling people. I'm on the phone on being in touch with your relation, like in relationships with your, with your people, right? Your sphere of influence. And you know what? One thing that's really cool and uh, is calling people with no ask, with no agenda, right? Just checking in on them. And how do you find people to do that, right? So your sphere of influence, the people who you're on Facebook with, 
right? And you see that one of them is having trouble with their dog or somebody's had a new baby or some, whatever. Call them, ask how it's going, right? Check in with them. Uh, people that you've sold properties to as you, as you get those more or your aunts and your uncles who might be interested, like calling people and just checking in, all right? And asking how it's going, right? It's just so significant and it's free. It's almost free, right? A, a, a card is a dollar. Your phone call is free, right? The most impactful time that you can spend in, in creating your business, all right? Now I put there just a list, I think, of 10 little circles. What I do for a hint for me, just so that I can remember, is I put the initials of the people, okay? Now I, that way, when I go back, I can make sure I've added them to my database and I've tracked what I've done with them. Okay, does that make sense? Again, I can, the quantity is important because I want to make sure I'm doing it, but it's also the quality. By the way, Lee Brown, who is L-E-I-G-H-B-R-O-W-N, she's one of the top uh, real estate speakers, trainers. Uh, uh, she's actually a phenom. Uh, she just did a kick tail in 2019 live stream. You can catch it on her Facebook, uh, Lee Brown, right? And when she said that one, her one tip to people was to make one more phone call a day. And she said she went and she gave you the closing percentages on a phone call versus say any of the other kinds of uh, like outbound marketing you're doing, right? Closing percentages significantly higher. And she said that one phone call that you connect with a day translates into one to two more transactions per month. Okay, which means that that's about $50,000 in your pocket from making those phone calls. So go and watch Lee Brown, L-E-I-G-H-B-R-O-W-N, and watch her kick tail in 2019. It's up on her, her stream. It's about an hour, an hour and a half. And she talks about that phone call because again, you know, it's these little things. It's the things that we do to make us special, but also establish that connection. I just heard, uh, Huh. I'm gonna have to get back to you on who it was. That was she was. It's a, a new a new life coach or new a new sales coach. Actually, I think I heard about her on Lee Brown's um, podcast. And what she said is, your your phone calls aren't lead generation; they're communication. Okay, and your scripts aren't scripts; they're conversations. Okay, so when we look at it like that, versus being like our cold calls going through a list, la 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 la. You know what? We are going to have that time maximization that we spoke about, okay? So that's the ritual about making sure that you're getting yourself out there. One of the things I have found is that people who have like a really strict calendar and they have everything all jotted out for the day, they don't leave room for an amazing conversation. They don't open themselves up for what's that little moment of magic I'm going to have today, okay? And I'm going to tell you as a professional, especially one that's just starting out, you need those moments of magic to puff you up and give you confidence, okay? So please, 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 I beg you, make sure you have this in your strategy every day. Follow this ritual. Make it a no-brainer. I'm going to do it. And you know what? If you are driving to go pick up a child, do it in the car on your way, right? So it's funny. I always said I, I put the people who I was going to call in my phone, like I fake called them so that they were all there and I would just have to click on the button, go down. And someone said, well, you can make a list and yada, yada, yada. But that's what works for me, right? Simple is better for me. <laughs> and so that's how I would make sure that I was making those phone calls. And you know what? Sometimes I'm getting that car and I'm tired, right? I just get out of one of those appointments. I don't want to talk to anyone. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to do my podcast and listen. I'm not going to do any reaching out. I am always sorry when I miss that opportunity. Because for me, that connection, right, that is so significant. And who knows, I may be calling you once I get your name and number. <laughs> Hi. So I'm looking what's next, and it's accomplish, right? I want to try to show you on mine my accomplish. <laughs> I actually ended up only writing down half of my accomplishments yesterday. And it's pretty funny because <coughs> I left room for all the rest of the things I was going to get accomplished. And so when I'm looking at it, that was like by this time yesterday, I had about six or seven things on my list. And why do I share that with you is because as you are starting with this all and as you are becoming a person who's going to do consistency, 
right? One of the things that happens is that we need to celebrate our, our minor victories. We're in a business that when you have your achievement, right, is not equal to your excitement, okay? So when you get that paycheck, generally it's, you know, two days after the closing, it comes either into your bank account or it gets put into your slot in your mailbox, but it's not like this moment of excitement, right? It's kind of like a, oh yeah, there it is. I've been waiting for that, right? Our moments of excite excitement are those moments of connection, that time that you get that first listing, the time that you get that phone call. You know, it's all these kinds of things, but what it isn't is that moment that, you know, that you have this accomplishment. So our rewards are not equal to what our accomplishments are. So as I think about our days and as my idea of, if I'm telling you, consistency is the key, I need you to celebrate your accomplishments, right? And so I want you to start noticing everything that you do and get your accomplishment on that, okay? So it may answer when, you haven't, when you're in it for three months and you don't have a paycheck yet, and your what did you do today things is you go back and you take a look at your accomplishments and you can go back and see where they came in. And it's also just a little spark of yay for me right in the middle of the day. So what I want you to do is I want you to start writing down your accomplishments. And uh, they can be minor, they can be big, but please give your, they may be just you're checking out the things in your box or whatever. You know, I know I, my checklist friends, they love putting that check mark in there. Right? I want you to write down your accomplishments. And this just says, throw caution to the wind, take chances, be bold. Right? This is one of my cards, actually. And the idea is catch yourself doing something right. Because what will happen with that is you will find that you are, um, you know, you're just happier. You know, we, ha we get beat up a lot in this business. Right? There's a ton of rejection. And so let's counterbalance that in our brain with success. Okay? So jotting down your accomplishments will help you with that. And what you will find, I think, is a happier mindset as you go through these days without anything really to show for it in your brain, right? You don't have a paycheck. You can't go home and your husband's like, did you make any money today or whatever, right? So you, you can't, you don't have that, but you can say, here's what I accomplished, right? I actually did get over my fear of that phone and I picked it up and I called someone and had a great conversation. I stopped at the soup kitchen to sign up for serving. I did this, I did that, right? And what you find is that it gets contagious, it gets addictive a little bit. All right, make sure you're charting down those accomplishments, promise. Okay, so I have a confession to make. I have a love-hate relationship with goal setting, okay? And the reason why is that, you know, goals that a company has, right? You may have ownership on those goals or you may not. Or you may meet with your manager and your manager may say to you, here's your goals. You need to do this, right? And the feeling to me is you may not own those goals that you're given, okay? Uh, you know, so, so that's the first part is that personalization, that ownership of those goals, okay? And the other thing is that, you know, I remember when I would sit with a new agent and I would talk about the goals of, you know, what do you want to do? How do you want to accomplish it? Can we reverse engineer it to if you have a goal that you need to make X amount of dollars? Because always people think dollars. And then we start chatting it back to what they actually have to do on a daily basis in order to hit that. You know, then they're like, oh my gosh, I can't do that. Right? So the goals to me are sometimes disincentivizing. Okay. And I think about when I sat down with somebody and I said, okay, so this is what you want to do. You know, this is like, like the, the norm for what someone makes their first year. And he's like, oh, I want to double that. I'm like, okay, totally doable. So let's reverse engineer it. What do we need to do in order to have that happen? Right. And he was out of the business in like one month because his goal of numbers was not in alignment with actually what it took to get there. Okay. And so I say this to you because, there, you know, I, we are going to declare goals, but they have to be goals that you want to declare. And it may be, you know, they need to be specific to you and they need to be personal to you. Okay. Anyways, however, that being said, once we talk about those goals and once we have a little bit of setting there, I want you to check in on yourself daily. Okay. So if I have a, a, three 30 day goal and a 90 day stretch goal, right? I need to make sure that I'm checking in every day. All right. So that part there is for you to make sure you're checking in every day. And another reason for goals is because you're, 
your attention to them. This is me. I had a goal of skydiving, you know, and it's interesting. I had a chance to do it. It was a fundraiser and for soup kitchen. And I, I did that skydiving and three months later I broke my back and I will never skydive again. So it's important that we address our goals. Okay. And we just don't say, yeah, someday, 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 right? Back to that thing about time. All we have is right now. So make sure that you are being honest to yourself and you are taking care of yourself and you're preparing yourself for success, okay? And if you wanna go skydiving, put it on your schedule, okay? Okay, this is my favorite thing that I added onto uh, this, okay? And it's your streak, okay? So when we talk about resolutions equal re rituals equal results, a lot of things that I've been talking with you about could be perhaps things that we're going to add to our schedule. We're going to add appointments. We're going to add identifying our errands. We're going to add, uh, you know, that phone call. We're going to add our thank you notes. Well, what about some things that you may want to take away or things that you may want to make sure that you're doing? And I find that a streak counter is a great way to do that. And here is something I am at 114 days on, right? So it's on my, yesterday was on my streak at 1.13 and I, that's my, you know, anyway. So it's Diet Cokes. So I'm a, you know, I love Diet Coke. Like I love it. I love the way you take a sip and it burns going down, the bubbles pop and it's just so like exciting to me, right? Now I also know it's terrible for me, right? People send me, you know, a boiled egg picture and say, this is what Diet Coke does to you, right? This, this, this was boiled by a Diet Coke. You know, or they, you know, talk about the abilities. My mother had a stroke, right? My mother, you know, that was, so, you know, there's, there's, there's stuff with strokes. There's a whole bunch of reasons. The biggest reason for me to stop drinking Diet Coke was I have, I have reflux, right? Acid reflux. And I, I was told I had it, but I didn't feel it because it was silent, I guess, right? Whatever. The bottom line was, you know, in September, uh, I just was burning all the time. And I was still drinking my Diet Coke. And I finally said, this is insane. Like, you are just nuts to be drinking Diet Coke when you have this reflux going on, okay? So I stopped Diet Coke and I started counting it on my streak, right? Because I've stopped before. You know, I stopped for Lent. I stopped for a bunch of stuff, but I never stayed stopped, right? So I started counting it, right? Now I'm at the conference, right? I'm presenting at NAR and I'm nervous and I'm like all these things and I've got nothing in my hand except water, right? And I'm like, ooh, I want my Diet Coke. Or I'm out to dinner and I want a Diet Coke. Or I'm driving in my car and I'm tired and I want a Diet Coke. I have not had a Diet Coke because I don't want to start my streak at one again, <laughs> okay? So I am going to use my streak counter for my habit. That becomes a ritual, okay? And soon, hopefully, it won't even be a thought, you know? So that's how I did it. Right? What about you? What's the thing that either you need to take away or something that you need to consistently add? Another streak I did for a year was that thank you note, right? My, my thank you note challenge to myself. One thank you note a year, a day, right? And that way I got in the habit. It was a no brainer. I had a 15 minute window of time that I did them then. Now I still do thank you notes and I still do them regularly, but I don't do them like I did that year. Okay, my streak is gone. You know, I should probably start another one. You know, maybe we'll do it together, right? We'll start our thank you note streak. Anyways, so important that you can get yourself this gamification and this game you play with yourself. Now, do I think that you care that I haven't had a Diet Coke in three months or four months? No, I know you don't care. It's the point. I know, right? And again, when you are in business for yourself, which you are, there's a lot of times that you don't have that accountability with people. So only you will know right? And only you will be able to put that on your accomplishment list and on your street counter as something that you've done. So really important. I think that it's something that you're going to want to make sure you're doing, okay? So when I was sharing about goals, one of the things that I, I feel like with goals is, you know, goals are not personal, like they're not internalized, right? And I know that internalization of, of, of thoughts, okay, our actions is really what it is that makes us have that sustenance to it and our, and our consistency and our stick to itness. And so one of the, the, the ways I do it for myself is I call it a promise, right? So that 30 day promise to myself. And so this is one way that I do my goal setting. And I say, what is short term and achievable, right? So what, what, what is my promise that I'm going to do? And for me, that ends up being something that's, that's really helpful. 
okay so what's short-term achievable what's my promise what can you think of for your promise some of a lot of my promises in the past have been uh, personal like I'm going to uh, whatever could be you know stay away from sugar for for 30 days or or whatever but it's things that I, I know are good for me and things I want to do and they're short-term and achievable for you for this it could be that you make sure that you have business cards you have your your cards that you got to send out saying that you're in, in the business of real estate it's going to be that you get your database created you get your database up to 200 you get your database up to 300 whatever it is promise yourself you're going to do it and then what you're going to do is you're going to what you're not going to break your promise to yourself you are too awesome and amazing to yourself to do that with right so you are going to do that goal so this stretch goal idea is one that came from Shalene Johnson who's again known in the fitness world and also in the business entrepreneurial world and she called she has these journals called the push journal and this is something of an exercise similar to what she does and it's called a 90-day stretch goal and so we're going to talk about what could be your stretch goal and what do I mean by stretch all right so this now these these terms came from I think Christina Wise had the F's and I kind of I, I jumped off of that so Christina Wise is a used to be a real estate agent um, she was the like the one of the first uh, agents to use the iPad for business and she kind of revolutionized like the whole entire industry by creating this iPad for real estate program and she she uh, super super successful on it and um, now she's actually morphed into a um, what she calls a wealthy wealthy life which is w-e-l-l-t-h-y w-e-a-l-t-h-y life and she has a whole business on that you can check out that website and um, anyway the reason I like them both for this is that they both kind of clarify for me what you know what what's my out there thinking right so how you doing rank yourself so this is an exercise I want us to do right now I want you to do okay I want you to rank yourself on a piece of paper okay uh, what one to ten one being worst ten being best how are you doing on finances fitness family and friends fun Philanthropy, okay, I'm cheating on that one. That one's actually PH, but it sounds like an F. So I'm gonna leave that in. So that's your service, your giving, and then your faith, okay? So those six items are what I'm gonna call your wheel of fortune, okay? And those are the things that when we think about one of our goals in real estate is that we went into it because of flexibility, right? And we wanted to be able to balance it with our lives. And now we find that we need to get our life in balance, right? So you take those and you map them out on this wheel here, okay? And again, you can create a wheel. I will, um, I will make sure you have a wheel sent to you when you when you do your when you do your uh, goal setting, and we'll do it when we're together, okay? But I want you to map them, all right? So as you map them, you know one thing that they talk about and I found was where's your flat tire, okay? What of those goals? Are those those items that those balance items to create a balanced life which one have you not been doing quite so well okay now take whatever that one is and that's going to become the, the 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 topic okay or the subject of your stretch goal okay so your 90-day stretch goal and I'll tell you a story the first time I did this was in a time that my real estate business and my school business were both busy 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 abundance right like that was my whole thing about finances was I'll just make more as long as I'm making enough then I'm just gonna make more and that's my business model right and so as I as I did this I realized that I was not in touch with my finances I when my when my accountant slash bookkeeper would give me my stuff I was like you know stick pins in my eyes rather than look at them right I had no idea where my business was at I had no idea where we were I just knew that like overall like did we have money right so I realized that, and, and again, this is the same time in my life that two of my kids are in college and one of them's at private school, right? So that's over $100,000 going out a year, right? So I was at this point and I'm like, oh my gosh, like I am totally not watching what's coming in. I'm not watching what's going out. I am, you know, I am in a state of just blindly following abundance. And so I took those 90 days 
and I made myself a streak counter to make sure that I checked all numbers every day. Okay. I created my own, I called it my fun analysis because uh, one of those items for finances is that you make sure you have enough money for fun, right? And I love having fun. So I called it my fun analysis and I created my spreadsheet, my hot sheet of what I was going to check out on a regular basis. So that was three years ago. And I still do that. I don't do it every day, but I follow it and I make sure that I understand now what's going on and I understand where I'm wasting money. Okay. And where I'm leaving money on the table. Okay. So now that was just my personal thing. My flat tire at that time was finances because it was something that I just let other people handle for me. Okay. And that's a mistake. So I stretched it out and I got real with it. I had those hard conversations. The other part about finance is that if we grew up in a family where you didn't talk about finances, right? It wasn't proper to talk about finances. We are not, we are not wired now to be business people, right? But we chose a profession that you are your own business person, right? So we need to be able to have finance conversations, right? And we need to get good at it. And I'll give you a little idea on this is, you know, when you are, when you are getting a commission check, right? Do you know before you get that commission check what it's going to be, right? So this is one of my tests on that if, the, if you have a financial flat tire. Are you getting a commission check and you have no idea what that number is going to be inside, okay? If, you, if that is you and that was definitely me, okay, then you need to have a, a stretch goal involving getting yourself in your business as a business, okay? It doesn't matter if you are a dainty lady who thinks that you don't talk about money, okay? Or talking about money is, is crass. It's not, okay? It's part of your business right? We should be asking when we book an appointment, what our commission is going to be, right? So anyways, you map them. Now, I want you to put that down as your stretch goal, whatever your flat tire is. And now my F, my last F for you, my special bonus F is follow through. With 90 days, right? That's enough time to create a habit. That's enough time to create a ritual. And that's enough time to make it part of your life. Okay. So I, you, it's really important that you follow through with this. Okay, so that kind of covers this piece of this. All right, we're getting ready to jump into uh, a couple other little things that will help us with our Rituals 365. Yay, congratulations, we have just passed the hour mark. And, you know, when I was deciding whether or not to make this a series of videos or one comprehensive video, I decided to make it a one because I'm hoping that if you can, you stick with me to the end of this so that we can talk about the whole entire Rituals 365 uh, travel planner and system because it is all one system. And I want you to know how the first time, the first time you go through this, I want you to be feeling like I can see how this is important and I can see how this is part of my success. And I wanna be able to use all of the pieces together, okay? So that I can create this amazing life and this amazing profession that I want. Okay, so the next piece on there was to carry. Okay, one of the things I learned when I started following people who I call checklist people, right? They're, they're the people who have checklists for everything and checklists on their checklists and checklists here and checklists there is that two things happen on the checklist. One is what happens when something gets taken, when, when something's on the checklist that doesn't get done that day. Okay, so you have something on there and maybe it's urgent and important important, but you just, it's, it didn't get done. Okay. Because it maybe it's not prioritized in order and you're checking down the list. Right. And so all of those not important, you know, not urgent on whatever gets done instead of the things that are important. That's my first beef with checklists is that they're not prioritized. Number one, number two is what happens to the things that don't get done. Okay. Now some people carry them over to the next day. Right. And some people, they fall off their plate. And I see it happen, you know, over and over again, that something gets on a checklist, never gets done and never gets carried over. And, uh, you know, so this piece right here is called my tasks to carry over. Now it could be on your, on your, on your planner, right? That piece doesn't get erased when you erase the rest of your day, right? Again, you snap that photo every day before you, before you erase anything, or it could be that you're carrying over stuff to the next day and you're starting it fresh. Or, or whatever, however you work your system. It's really important 
that we remember those things that we didn't get to, okay? Because they don't become any less important because we didn't get to them, right? They may even become more important, all right? And again, this the, this goes for, um, again, the, the, the dog license you're supposed to do for your family, you know, the, the getting in the financial aid forms, the, you know, getting your, your appointments booked, getting to town hall before you have your CMA, whatever it is, you know, you have to make sure that there's something, a stopgap, to not let things fall off your plate. And this right here, if this is something that you incorporate, will be something that ends up being significantly amazing uh, part of your journey and something that some people say is the most important part, okay? Um, I, I think I might like accomplishments better because I like, I like that, that happy feeling. Anyway, let's take your, take your, take your planner. Where's my planner? All right, I lost my planner. I must have been flailing too much. Um, so what I want you to do is I want you to turn your planner over and um, I want you to go to your audit. I'm trying to look at my audit. Okay, I don't know where it went. So on your audit, when you flip it over, you'll see that there are three different audits that are there, okay? And this is something that I would really love for you to commit to, maybe even make this your promise to yourself to audit for 30 days. Because some of the things that we find out, I really can't believe I lost it, um, about ourselves is that um, we're, we're wasting a lot of time, right? So here's the thing about my time. So what I want you to do is, yeah, on the front of this, we're talking about all the things that you're gonna do, right? And all the things that are part of your day. But what actually happens, okay? What happens in that day? And the thing that happens is that we start to realize that on a daily basis, a lot of things are happening that we did not put on that front of our, that the front of our travel journal, tra travel planner, right? So we find that we're spending a lot more time in the car. We find that we are spending a lot more time on social media. We find that we are um, avoiding doing certain things, okay, like phone calls, right? Uh, we find that our whole entire house got cleaned over three times and our pans look perfect in the pan drawer, but we haven't done the things that we promised ourselves, okay? So these are some things that come up in the time audit. One thing that came up for me and actually comes up for most people is how much time we're spending on social media and, and going through our emails, okay? And one of the things that we know that as we see this develop as a trend is we can change our front, right? And we can say, we, and we can plug into our calendar and our tasks for a half hour in the morning and for a half hour in the evening, I'm gonna to attend to those things and I'm not gonna waste my day doing them. Okay, the other thing we can sometimes see is how much time, how we can maximize our time, like on the road, okay? Now, as you're going through that time audit and you realize that you are in fact a victim of urgent, not important, which means you go to the office, everybody swarms you, or you go there and you, you do all these different things and you are busy doing all that stuff and you're not taking care of your business, right? Put that on your don't do list. Your don't do list becomes super important, okay? And that's the stuff that you say, I'm not gonna waste my time doing, right? I am not gonna check emails all day long. I am not going to check social media all day long. I am not going to go and whatever, you get my point, right? Whatever it is that you're wasting your time on, or that is a time suck. It's called time suck, <laughs> isn't that awful? So whatever is a time suck for you, you're going to want to make sure that you're going through and you are taking that off your list or you're minimizing it into a, a bite-sized bit, okay? And you're putting it on your schedule proactively, right? The second part is purge and prune. We spoke about that, you know, selling real estate by a fire hose, which means anybody who will talk to you, you will, you'll, you'll work with, okay? And so you get these leads from either your office or Zillow or something. And these people, you're, they're chasing you around, you're looking at 50 different things, they're not only working with you, they're driving you crazy, you're like, you know, you're just way off. Or you're working with a buyer who, who historically, chronically lowballs, like embarrassingly, properties. And you're spending your whole weekend with them, they're putting in these ridiculous offers, no one's ever accepting them. And you're looking like a 
like an idiot, you know, when you're going to present these offers. And, and so, you know, this whole entire thing is not what your vision of your business is. So, you know what, you have control over that. Purge those people, right? Prune them. They, they say like, if you want a, an amazing garden, right? You purge it, you prune it, you get rid of things, right? And then you let the other things flourish, right? Again, what, back to what Seth Godin said, that small viable audience of who it is that you want to work with. Okay, so you purge and prune. Who's your time suck? Do you need them? And then busyness is a cop out. You know, I, I, um, I see this happen so often when people have administrative duties is that they let those things, those busy things become a cop out, you know, and that that's what they're doing. I have a daughter who like all of her lists always look like they're a work of art. And I'm like, busyness is a cop out, get to work, right? So get away from that busyness. If you say to me, huh, I was busy all day putting out fires. Right. I am sure when I say to you, okay, how did you do on your rituals? You're gonna be like, well, I didn't get to my rituals because I was putting out fires. I'm super important. Right. That's not how it goes. Okay. You make a commitment to yourself and you say no to that person who's throwing you down that rabbit hole. Okay. It's so important, my friends. Please do it. Well, I have lost my travel planner, but I do have the audit. Okay. The big one. And so the next one is a money audit, a daily money audit. And again, back to when I was giving you examples about my, my stretch goal of finances, one of the things that really helped me really see what's going on is a money audit. Okay, writing down everything that comes in, running down everything that goes out, and just really getting a handle on where the money went. You know, when you get that, your, your 1099 and you're like, where the hell did all that money go? Okay, then you're gonna be like, oh God, now I have to pay taxes on it, right? So that's the other part, by the way, is that being a real estate professional, there's an enormous amount of things that you can write off, okay? So having a good audit system in place is significant for you. You know, right now, I mean, my purpose on this is we, we love what we do. We love being able to help people. Service is a huge part of our business, but let's be honest, we want money too. Okay, and we probably want a lot of money. Okay, so knowing what it is that's coming in, auditing how you're handling it, you know, making sure that, as I say, like when I started doing that spreadsheet, you know, it was something that changed my life. Okay, and it's, and it's funny, one of my, a business partner of mine says, I started tracking my money. When I started tracking my money, I started making money. And then watching my money grow has been, uh, you know, exciting to watch it accumulate. It's fun, okay? So this is Patricia McArdle. And so one of the things that she said, and she's an attorney, was that she would do kind of like the same thing I did, like that whole abundance thing and money's coming in, going out, it's all taking care of itself. But when she started actually auditing it and seeing what it was that she was spending, what it was that she was bringing in, how she was bringing it in for her, how she was billing it out, how she wasn't getting paid. You know, it, it became a game changer. All right, I know that you probably love your profession. I love my profession, but I also love getting paid for it, okay? So make your money audit count, okay? Now there's a couple people out there who I think do have some really cool systems in place. One is uh, Dave Ramsey. Um, he's like a, a legend in this. Right, his daughter, Rachel Cruz, so it's Rachel, C-R-U-Z-E, she has a very similar bucket system. Uh, she's a little bit more, she does YouTube, she has a huge YouTube channel and YouTube show, and she's like, you know, really contemporary, and I think really amazing and really funny and nice. So she's got some cool money things. Uh, again, Christina Wise has Wealthy Wealthy Wise. Um, so she's somebody who you might wanna take a look at. There's a lot of great people out there uh, that can offer you inspiration. I highly recommend that you reach out to them, or not reach out to them, but that stop following them, stop putting that as part of your sphere of influence. But first, give me a 30-day audit, okay? And I'd love you to tell me what you found out. Okay, and the last on your audit is your food, okay? And I, and I actually wish that this said food and exercise, okay? Because uh, I think that they are both super important for you to be um, the best machine that you can be, right? So what I'm looking for for you to look at the food, okay, is are you using it as fuel, right? You need endurance. You're going to have long days. You're going to need energy throughout the whole day. Are you fueling yourself, okay? You know, and the other part of that is are you being the best you that you can be? One of the things that 
we had a joke when we were at my old real estate company where like you could tell who was selling a lot of real estate because their butt got bigger. You know, whoever had the biggest butt had the most deals that month, you know, and it's awful to say that, uh, but it's true because you push away, you know, you, you start eating in that car because you don't have time for a good meal and you're just too busy and you stop exercising because you don't have time for it. And what you find ends up happening is now you have no energy because you haven't been taking care of your body. All right, so this, this food audit, and again, this is not fancy. There's a lot of fancy things out there. I'm just talking about a real place to do it, all in one place where you are able to, again, be the best you that you can be. And that's what you're gonna need for your business. Okay, and I'm gonna put on my little glasses for this one because I wanna read this to you. Okay, nutrition scientists have put enormous effort into trying to evaluate the magnitude of reporting errors. They found that people underestimate their true calorie intake by an astonished percentages, usually about 30%. So when we sit there at the end of the day and kind of go, hmm, 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 what is it that I ate today and what did I, what did I drink or whatever? And we underestimate what we did by about 30%. Not only that, but if we had seconds and our portion control and the chips that we had in the car and the handful of this, I'm a nut person. I grab a bunch of nuts and I never, I'm sure I undercalculate all the time. So why is this important? Number one is, you know, when you are going to want to be your best, you can't be your best that morning, right? You have to put a series of days together and time together to get to where you want to be, okay? And really, as I said, it stops with you. You can't, like, it doesn't, you can't make anyone do it for you and you can't do it for anyone, but you are the one who knows, okay? And again, back to that daily exercising audit, okay? Exercise is an antidepressant. <laughs> it is something that keeps your heart going stronger. It gives you energy in the course of the day. It helps you sleep better. So audit your exercise, okay? And make sure that you are, again, you're being who you wanna be and you're doing what you wanna do. And then they just said that wearables, you know, the, the, the number of the, the, the billion, $29 billion market for wearables, okay? So we are tracking ourselves. And it's funny because, you know, like people will be like, oh, I can't, I can't, my daughter, right? I can't exercise. I don't have my, my Fitbit on. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you can, right? So just be real with yourself. You don't need a lot of urgent, not important stuff to get you going. You know, um, just get on, just get out there, right? Go for a walk. You don't need fancy shoes. You don't need fancy clothes. You don't need a fancy Fitbit. Just do it, okay? Be the person you want to be and these rituals will help you, okay? So up to now, we've been talking about being in the day, okay? As you open up your travel planner, you see on the left-hand side a spot for the week, okay? And on your hot sheet, it's a seven-day, uh, like, day, like a, a sheet to put those little appointments that you have scheduled. I do this on Sunday night. I think on there it says to do it on Sunday night, just to take a look at your week. Okay, because what does that show you? It shows you your flow. It shows you your consistency. It makes sure that you've got time in there for rest and it makes sure that you are being, you know, one step at a time. So that seven day hot sheet will be something that is really important for you. All right, and then your pipeline, your pipeline at a glance. So I, I have to tell you a story about uh, this, this couple I had that got one of my just sold postcards in the mail. And they, they reached out to me, I went to their house and I, did a, I honestly did a quick CMA on them because I didn't want to give them the full CMA because their numbers would be changing by the time they were ready to list. So I kind of stayed in touch with them, but I, I did not put them actively in my pipeline because they were, as I said before, like they were spring people, right? And I didn't put them as part of the people that I talked to you about earlier, that I was keeping my eye on on a daily basis, staying in touch with them on a regular basis. And what happened? right? That sign went out for someone else. And I, I completely own that. It was me. I was the person who wasn't there for them. Okay. So make sure that you have your pipeline in your awareness all the time. So when I was telling you about my challenges with goal setting, you know, one of the, one of the people, again, Tim Ferriss, who I spoke about earlier, he introduced me to a, a, a process called fear setting. Okay. And what fear setting is, is what is it that you're afraid of? Okay, because we need to get on top of those fears. You know, I am somebody who says you can't be fearless. However, you can fear less. Okay, so on that sheet and on the back of your card, actually it's on the inside, so it's right there. 
it gives you a spot. Now, listen, when I say to people like, okay, let's do fear setting, they're like, oh, 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 my fears will not fit on that. Okay. I understand that. So you can use a bigger form. You can actually use your fear setting that you have on your big form if you want, when you get it right. And, the, and what you're going to do is the way I do it is I write down what the fear is. And then I write down what is the worst outcome that could happen. All right. And then I say, well, what would I do if that worst outcome happened? And could I deal with it? And could I build a, a strategy to move on from there? All right. And the answer is always yes, I could. I can get past that. So that's the first step. Then the second step is, all right, so while I'm going for that thing, like say I wanted to run a, a marathon, okay? I fear that I'm not going to finish. Okay, what's the worst outcome? I don't finish. Can I handle that? Yes, I can. But what are the minor, you know, secondary achievements and accomplishments I got in, try, in training for that marathon? Okay, my heart rate got better. My miles got better. My, I lost two, two clothing sizes. I made great relationships with my running friends. I did 15 miles and now I can do half marathons. So even though I didn't get my big goal, I got a bunch of little goals and I got a lot of achievements and accomplishments along the way. So now I have a lot of things that I did right, even though I didn't get to what it was that I was afraid of. Okay, in real estate, you know, we're afraid of that phone. We're afraid of our database. We're afraid to look stupid. We're afraid we're not going to get any, any clients. We're afraid we're going to be spending money and we're not going to have anything to show for it. We're afraid to tell people in real estate because we're not confident enough. We have a lot of fears as we're starting off. Okay, then you get busy and you're afraid you're not going to keep it, right? So anyways, it's really important that you identify your fears. You figure out that I can deal with the worst outcome. And look, by the way, while I'm doing it, look at all these accomplishments I had in the meantime. Okay, fear setting, super important. Now here's a screen grab from Tim Ferriss's. Uh, and this is from, I think, his TED Talk. And what he does is he defines it he prevents it and he repairs it, right? So when he's talking about his fears, he kind of goes at it in a little bit different way, but again, along the same lines. And I just wanted to show you this because again, as I told you from the beginning, my ideas in here are generally somebody else's ideas that I, cr that I pulled that I thought were maximize what it is that you're gonna do to rise, okay? So that's Tim Ferriss's example of it. And I think it's pretty cool. All right, back to those goals, right? So in the back here, we have those goals that we declare. And I talked about it when we were doing them earlier. Um, one of the things I've heard a lot of times is defining goals as SMART goals, okay? And what that looks like is specific, measurable, actionable, recorded, and timetable, all right? So you don't say, I wanna get rich at real estate or I wanna be successful at real estate. That's not specific. Okay, it's not measurable, it's not actionable, it's not recorded and it's not a timetable. So you wanna break it down as much as you can into what it looks like. And again, those habits and tasks on the front will help you with this, all right? This is, a, this is probably the, the biggest, strongest way that I've seen people talk about goals. I think we have Brian Tracy, Jim Rohn, you know, all of the, all of the greats out there. They, this is what they bring up as far as it goes. So SMART goals. So I want you to try to think about getting yourself smart, okay? And again, we talked about that 30-day promise to yourself and what that 30-day promise to yourself is going to look like. And why is it important? Because we wanna be able to find our successes and we wanna be able to have something that's achievable for us in a small amount of time, long enough to develop a habit, but short enough that we can actually say, yay me, <laughs> all right. So what are you thinking about in your brain right now that's achievable in the next 30 days? Okay, I know I've given you a lot to think about and I'm hoping that I'm not overwhelming you. Again, you can go forward, you can go back, you can pause. When you come back, it takes you back to the slide that you were on. So you can use this over and over again. But I just want you to start thinking, okay? And what about your flat tire? What, was your, what is your 90 day stretch goal, okay? And again, one of the things that uh, I, I want you to do is just try to do those six Fs frequently and look for that flat tire. And again, you know, ain't nobody got time for that flat tire, right? So again, take care of yourself. Make sure that you are attending to this. Make sure you're doing it, right? And here's what I say. And again, this is super important for me because I am an idea generator and I love my ideas and my ideas are 
what has been something that's been really successful for me, right? So I, but the, the top agent, the top, like the top person that I worked with said to me, I uh, actually said to other people, you know what, if you don't like Kate's idea, don't worry, she's going to forget about it in five minutes and she'll be on to the next one. Okay. And again, it wasn't meant to be cruel. It was a joke, but of course it had resonance. So what I have created is a parking lot and that parking lot is where you park your ideas. Okay. So I'm telling you, starting out basic, we're going to do very basic skills on how to do it. Now, while we're doing that, you may be thinking down the road what you're going to do and you, and you don't want to forget those ideas and you want to keep those ideas going. And then when that's done, right, when it's in the parking lot and when you're ready for your next idea, it's there. And it doesn't have to sit there in your brain, taking away from that amazing brain time that you're going to use to keep your actions going and fresh. So the parking lot, one of the most important parts of my life is parking my ideas for when I'm going to use them. Okay. And I think that it's something that you should start dreaming too, right? Get your dream on, right? What, what is your dream? What are you going to do? Right? Put it in your parking lot for now. So this is what I picture my brain like, <laughs> right? It's chaos. It's chaos a lot. And the thing is, is that with this tool, this parking lot tool, this simple little parking lot tool, I can manage and I can function and I can be productive. I can even be awesome. Okay. So again, on the bottom here, we're tracking goals to actuals. We talked about goals. We talked about the actual fulfillment of doing them. And you are working with a real estate company. I'm sure that is giving you goals. And one of the things that's really important is that you track your goals to actuals and you really do it right. I used to, when I, when I was selling health club memberships, we used to have goals and I used to make up these numbers all the time because I just hated someone telling me what to do. But there's this thing about accountability. And I love this. I want you to pause and read this, this whole entire uh, slide, okay? What it is, it's a Facebook post by my friend Sarah Gustafson. And, and if you knew Sarah, you probably do know Sarah. You know, she's, you know, got the designer shoes on. She always looks like a million bucks. She's, you know, got the world, you know, by storm. And here she is writing a checkout for a, a cat shelter, you know, as a donation because she had an accountability partner and what their, 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 their uh, agreement was, was if you don't hit your goals and if I don't hit mine, like we account to one another. And if you don't, you have to donate to my uh, charity and, if, and vice versa. So here she is writing out a check <laughs> to a cat shelter. And it's, and it's funny, but it, the reason I share this is because these gamification things that we do with each other and the way that we make sure that we are not being secret agents or secret goal setting or all these things that we want to do that we're not sharing because we're afraid of failure, right? That you just go right out there and you do it because that's the only way that things are going to happen for you the way that I think that you want them to happen for you. Okay. So I love this and I think it's hysterical. I'm going to stop this so that you can stop it and then we'll start on the next slide. Okay. So the planner, which is your monthly strategic planner. Okay. On this, I, I used to have down here, uh, the, your, your marketing arc, your storytelling arc, right? Because one of the things that we know at NAR, John Smaby, our president says, everybody wants to hear your story. So what story are you going to share? What story are you going to, um, create for your branding, for your social media? And so for your message, telling and for where you're going. Okay. So I use that planner as a marketing arc. Okay. And I always follow back to when I was saying, don't be on Facebook all day long, right? I follow a five, five, five in the morning and at night. And by the way, this is Katie Lance, her, her five, five, five. And so you follow, you go to Katie Lance, you'll find all sorts of great downloadable, um, content calendars. But so the five, 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 I like five things or whatever the emoji is. I put a lot of hearts out there. Five, those, five comments. So I comment on pages and groups and, and, and what people are sharing out there. And then I share five things. Okay. So again, whatever it is that I want to become the expert on, or I want to be embedded in their communication, those are going to be my like, comment and share. I'm also going to do this with my colleagues. I'm going to share their stuff because you know what? I'm going to want them to do that for me when I start getting business, right? So five, five, five in the morning, five, five, five at night. After that five, 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 you are just wasting time. Okay. Treat these as a business tool that they are. Okay. Not as your checkout point. Not now. 
okay? Down the road, when everything's in place and you have more time to be spending on, you know, cruising the net, that's another thing. But right now, I really want you focused on this excitement that you're feeling inside, this fire that's going in you, okay? So again, here we go. Weekly, uh, at least one each. Real estate market, um, so comment on the real estate market, post on the real estate market, post on your community, right? You wanna be your community mayor. You wanna be your community expert, all right? People don't need us in real estate anymore. They can buy and sell without us, right? You know that. So the reason they're with us is because they want to be with us, okay? So you wanna do your personal professional share also. Okay. And again, it could be, you know, a lot of times I'll see people put in like just souls, right? And it's a big picture of them and the house, right? Well, guess what? That's about you. No one cares about that. What they care about is that happy homeowner, right? Bring in your homeowners that you helped. Bring in the people in, com in the community that you're helping, right? Don't make it about you. I feel like I want to throw up on myself when I see that. Like they call it humble bragging right? And I understand there's an element of humble bragging, but make it about the person that's doing it, right? And make it about that, that person that, or that group of people or whatever that you're serving, okay? That's your personal professional share, okay? These just souls and people tell us how much money they've made in a month. I'm like, seriously, right? I get it. So people know you're busy and you're professional, but wouldn't it be interesting if they saw who you helped? And wouldn't they like it when you shared how it is that you've made an impact on that person? Okay, so that's a strategy. Again, we'll talk about this more in the day that we're together, but this calendar here is your strategy for it, okay? Because there's this thing called uh, RASMs, which are beware of random acts of social media because you're just wasting your time. All right, so this, I just wanna show you a little success story. My dad, who became a real estate agent with me at the age of 78, when I started tracking things down, this became his calendar, and I just thought it was hilarious. And he had a place to put that. Like, could you imagine that being in his brain? <laughs> All right, so however you do it, whenever you're doing it, how you're doing it, please do it, okay? I think that the tools that we have really make this program awesome. As I said, it's in beta form now. So you're gonna be part of my future, I hope, okay? And here, I just wanna tease you, right? This is your gratitude tracker and also a working checklist for your positives and negatives on any given situation. We have a whole bunch of tools that we'll be covering on our day together, okay? This, this goes on and on. I just gave you the basics because I want to get you going. I want you to be focused. I know you can do this. Again, join the Facebook group, Rituals365. We do have special offers at different times. We're putting together a, a special group called The Squad, uh, and that's something that's available for you. This is just a little picture of the Facebook group. Okay, that's, as I say, I live stream every day. There's different comments and shares on it at any given point in time. There's over 300 people in that. It's a great safe place to be learning and to be supported. Um, and again, we are gonna be doing some amazing things together in this program. I thank you so much for doing this with us. Okay, now again, the, the people whose addresses I got, your starter kit is on its way. You are part of the beta test with us. So all of your feedback is really important to me and I can't wait to hear what, they, what it is, and I'd like you to download your planner now, okay? So this is Kate Lanigan McGregor. We are on this journey together, and it's gonna be amazing. Thank you so much.